So I wanted to do this video because I get asked a lot being in Houston and being just a few miles away from the med center, what do I do with my makeup? I'm going through chemotherapy or even for women who have alopecia. They say, what do I do? I feel like I'm washed out. I don't feel like myself. My skin is dry. Show me some things that I can do to feel better about myself when I'm going through a really hard time. So I have Alexis here who has donated her face as a model today for this video. And we just want to show you and give you a couple tips of things that you can do when you're in the hospital or you're at home to just look your brightest and your best. My name is Alexis Alvarado. I am from Lake Charles, Louisiana. I had a routine mammogram at age 44 in May of 2018. They found something suspicious. I went in and had a follow-up ultrasound and biopsy, um, and they found that it was breast cancer. I came to see Gentry um, because I've lost my hair. Well, I do have some little sprouts, but I don't have many. Um, and I'm having some trouble uh, because I don't have that hairline so much anymore to, to kind of give me that definition on my face. Um, I have lost some of my eyebrows and my eyelashes, which is very strange that I've gone through a whole complete round of chemo and have not lost that. Um, and so I'm hoping that she can kind of help me figure out how to fill in some of what I'm missing. So that's why I came to see her today for some tips and some ideas um, to help me on the days that it gets tough um, because it does get tough. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is talk about skincare. So you were saying to me a little earlier that um, your skin is drier, you're breaking out, things that you're not used to, you're having the 19-year-old breakout on your face too. Yes. <laughs> and she actually already owns this product too. She just got it um, actually when she was coming up here to get a second opinion around yep. that time. She came into the store because she actually lives in Lake Charles um, and she was getting all that organic plant-based skincare. So we were just talking before the video that you don't want to use a lot of harsh chemicals because your skin is so sensitive when you're going through the chemotherapy. So my plant-based skincare line has really helped calm and soothe the skin and taken out some redness but I want to talk to her today about exfoliating how and how often you're supposed to do it and boosting up her moisturizer something a little bit richer so the first product that she would use in the morning is the exfoliate and that's the one that has a little jojoba esters in it and it's going to help remove a lot of that flaky dead skin especially when the dead skin is in the way the moisturizer can't penetrate as deep either um, there's another product called quench we're out of the big size, so I'm using the baby one. She's been waiting four months patiently for this stuff to come out. It's actually just about to come out. That's the good news. But you don't want to use a cotton pad for this. You just want to put this all over your entire face and let your face drink up that hydration. So this has lavender flower water in it, cucumber, and aloe. Very calming and soothing to redness and also very plumping to the skin cells. So when the skin cells are dehydrated and shriveled like a raisin, this stuff plumps them up full of water like a grape. So that way your serums and your creams glide in super easy, like a butter. Next product that I'm gonna use, it's great for dark circles. Look up, this has Arnica, which is used for medicinal purposes. This is really good for puffiness, dark circles, which is one of the things that you were just complaining to me about. <laughs> um, her under eyes, lack of sleep, going through all of this. It's very stressful and you know a lot of tears shed. So sometimes you get puffiness when you wake up in the morning. This stuff is amazing to put on to help depuff and it works as an anti-inflammatory with arnica, cucumber, and aloe for the redness. So I'm gonna let that soak in for a second and I wanna talk about um, the three different moisturizers we have. So maybe, you know, six months ago before she started this whole process, her skin could have been more combo or oily. I would have suggested either hydrate or balance for her skin type. But when someone's going through chemo, like I was saying before, your skin gets so super tight and dry. Did you feel like it was an instant thing as soon as you started going through the process or was it closer to the end you really started feeling like it was drying out? Probably after about the second or third treatment. So, so second or third quick. week. Oh yeah. You're on 12th or you're 12th Yeah, I just now. finished my 12th. Yes. So it was, sounds like it was, you know, just right after you first started yeah, it. Yeah, and I have had oily skin all my life. Okay, so she <laughs> would be something, someone that would use balanced moisturizer then. So I'm gonna put Enrich on you today, which is actually what I've been using. I kind of stepped up Hydrate to Enrich as I like that shea butter in here. It's got the mango butter in it. Again, all of my products have hyaluronic acid, which help bind moisture. Um, and then also, I'm sure your lips are probably dry too. Huh? Mm -hmm. Usually when your skin is getting dry, the lips are dry. So I'm going to use the um, original Lip Dew, the clear one. It looks electric orange, but it's actually a sheer product that has aloe in it, 
and it also has uh, vitamin C, so it kind of tastes like oranges, mm -hmm. and avocado oil. So that completes the skincare portion um, for the daytime. She was just saying to me that she hasn't lost a lot of her lashes and she doesn't know for sure, but she's contributing that to using the castor oil eye makeup remover that we have. So we all know castor oil has been used for years and years and years. You can buy some at the drugstore to put on your lashes and your eyebrows to condition them so they don't get brittle and fall out. So she feels like that's probably why her lashes have been staying so nice and healthy. She's lost a little bit of hair, but I mean, from looking at her, she has more eyelashes than I have so that says a lot <laughs> um, and then you can use the undressed face wash to take off of your makeup in the evening too it's a eucalyptus face wash and then you repeat the toner serum and cream all over again so it's really just your step one that's changing between morning and night nothing really different besides increasing your hydration between what any person would do or someone who's going through chemotherapy the first step that I'm going to use on her is the tinted moisturizer this is called Tinted Primer from my brand because it has a primer and a tinted moisturizer mixed all in one with sunscreen. And I use a synthetic hairbrush to apply it. And we already know her shake as she uses this product. But we start towards the center of the face and then we swipe outwards. And I know because going through something like this, you know, your eyes are tired and stressed, so you're gonna wanna put this all around your mm -hmm. eye socket, but please do not do that. If you put things in areas where they don't belong, you're gonna have a lot of slip and slide. So I will use something else to correct the darkness underneath her eye, but please don't put primer in the eye socket area. Your jawline is a really good break, so right around here is a good stopping point. I don't wanna see you bring it all the way down your neck. <laughs> and one thing we were discussing earlier is the hairline. So what were you saying about the hairline? You're having a hard time figuring out what? Uh, I'm having a hard time figuring out where to stop mm -hmm. um, because it's so white. My, my, my scalp is so white, I kinda wanna cover it. <laughs> I wanna blend it a little more. So when she first shaved her head, she was saying that it was so much whiter because her hair had been you know, casting a shadow and she wasn't getting a suntan. So, but over the summer, she's got more color to her, her, the top part of her head, which is closer to the color of her face. But if you're freshly shaven, it's important that you take your foundation and just kind of buff it into where the hairline was. You don't want to stop like it's a mask <laughs> on your face. Blend it and just kind of shade it backwards. Your face, it's your art project. And just keep blending <laughs> back. Um, I think the best thing to probably do on the top part of the head right after you shave is maybe use bronzer, but I wouldn't put liquid base all the way. It's gonna be too hard to blend on the back side where you can't see. Okay, so now we've finished the tinted primer step and we're gonna move over to the foundation step. So we are gonna be testing two colors on her. We are gonna be testing the vanilla and the sandy beige. So when she came here in, was it June or July? Right at the beginning of July, yeah. Okay she was wearing sandy beige. We think she's lost a little bit of her tan, so we're just gonna make sure. So same thing with any other makeover, you wanna make sure you're matching the color of the chest. And I do think that sandy beige is now a little bit too dark. Too dark. Is that yep. what you were thinking too when yep. you were applying? I thought so. I felt a little a little orangey brown some days. We don't want any Oompa Loompas, okay? Nope. <laughs> so now I'm gonna use the vanilla foundation. And this is gonna help give a little bit more vibrance to the skin. You know, you feel like your skin is dry. Maybe you have some blemishes popping up. Um, I would normally say primer is would be enough for her, but I think right now we're trying to get that extra polished look. I think adding the foundation is key. So when I put this product on, I use the same brush that I used to apply the primer. Um, still swiping it all over, giving it an even canvas. But then anywhere that we have sun damage or maybe a blemish that's come up, we wanna make sure you're applying it in a tapping motion. Turn towards me and make sure you canvas over the lips, around the nose. If you've watched my other videos, you know why I do that. If you are new to watching my videos, I like to take all the natural color out of the lips so that way when I get to the lipstick, it's gonna be more true to shade. So when you compare one side of the face to the next, look right into the camera so they can see how the skin just looks more dewy and more flawless on this side. Okay, now we're gonna follow with concealer. So she was just saying, that concealer has been her lifesaver. I don't know why people continue to ask this damn question, okay? If somebody say, don't be asking them, oh, you look sick and tired. That's the last thing, that's rude. That's like saying, did you gain some weight? Don't be asking that question, okay? So we're trying to cancel out the darkness underneath her eye and make her eye look lifted. And I think this is one of the best things you can do to get that pick me up. If you skip over concealer, you're still gonna look and feel tired. To me, when it's canceled out, I can be tired as hell. I put some concealer on, I look in the mirror, I'm like, I'm alive. So I really do think that it helps brighten not only your appearance, but your soul. And yes. look up, and she agrees with me. So I'm using a color called Nude Bisque on her right now. And you wanna make sure you're bringing it up towards the end of the eyebrow. And going up against the inner corner of the nose, right up here. And then you can use your finger to blend it out. Do not put this product 
on the eyelid. I know you're gonna wanna take mm -hmm. your foundation and your concealer and rub it all over your eyelid. We'll get to your eyelid in a minute, but we do not put those products on the eyelid because we wanna avoid creasing. So now when you look into the camera, look at the difference. Do you see how much brighter her under eye looks? You can see everything looks more lifted and awake. I think that's so important. We'll give a little bit more of that nude bisque. And look up at the ceiling for me, and I'm going up. The little tear trough looks kind of dark when it kind of turns down, so by correcting that, you're giving it a lift. Am I looking too far up? Nope, you look great. I just have you look up so I don't stab you in the eye <laughs> one of my Godzilla fingernails I got here. Look up. And then blending on down. This concealer could be used on the face if needed. If you have like a volcanic eruption somewhere, you could use this anywhere on the face. I'm gonna follow with the uh, toasted coconut is the color I'm gonna use. So look straight ahead. When you apply your powder, always make sure you're doing it in a tapping motion and then buffing it between the hairs on the face. And look up for me. And turn towards me. So I have a question. Yeah, ask me. So how do I deal with all of these pimples that are down here? Should I, can I use a, just a little tab of concealer down there too? They don't look as bad today, but sometimes they get worse. I would probably do your bronzer and first, then kind of spot treat and then set it with powder and then go back over with the bronzer. That's okay. Probably, so we'll go over that in the next part okay. since that's a good concern of yours. And look up. I meant to ask you that. Yeah, that's okay. That's what we're doing this for. And then we set the concealer really close to the under eye with our fingers. If you don't set it, it's gonna liquid crease. Not a dry crease, but it'll start melting. Okay, now for the top of the head. So look straight ahead, and you can see how she's got a lot of shine on the forehead. To kind of tone down that shine, I, shine, I would buff a little bit of setting powder over it, and that'll control it just a little bit. I like a little bit of reflection of light, which is okay, but we don't want to look like we get some mirror on the head, so we just tone it down. So move your head around on the light so they can see how that powder just kind of toned down the shine a little bit on this side. Looking good. I do this for men too when I'm doing headshots because they get hot and sweaty, they get nervous when they're taking photos. <laughs> I just put a bunch of this all the way across <laughs> so it's not a reflective surface. Now we are on to the blush and bronzer portion. So I'm gonna be using golden contour on her. So she has warm contour at home, but I have a feeling she tans more of a red shade, but she's been feeling a little oompa loompa like when she's lost some of her color. So we are putting the golden on to neutralize and lift the underside of the neck. So hold your chin high. And what you wanna do is you wanna start right underneath the jawline and make sure you get behind your ear. I always teach this in my lessons, but it's way more important when you don't have hair <laughs> to get that bronzer and buff it and shadow it all around the ear. When we were talking earlier, she doesn't really feel comfortable wearing her wig every day. It's too hot, itchy, and sweaty, so she prefers to go bald. So it's even more important if you're not wearing a wig just to make sure you're blending and buffing everything. And you can see how this is kind of chiseled and brought that inward, and I've shaded around her ear so it doesn't look so bright. Let me get this side. And she was also complaining to me about a couple of blemishes and how should she cover those. I don't like to put liquid base on the neck. Um, I just feel like when you put liquid base all the way down, it starts to settle in the mm -hmm. lines. But what she could do is kind of spot treat with the concealer, set it with powder, and then um, go back and add a little bit more bronzer. So I've got a little bit of concealer left on my brush here. And she's got a couple of dots, not many, maybe two or three. And you can see how just by putting a little bit of concealer, it neutralized those. Turn this way. And now I'm gonna set with powder and turn towards me. And voila, they gone, girl. And then just to add a little bit more shadow, I would just go back over with a little bit of bronzer and just, where you did a little patchwork, just bronze it back up again. Bronzer is the same product that we put on and below the cheekbones to enhance those cheekbones. Especially if you don't have hair, I don't <laughs> want to see a bright pink racing stripe of bronzer across your face. <laughs> Make sure you're buffing and blending. And it really depends on the person and the size of your forehead if I put it up here. But I think if you are bald or you have shaved your head, it is super important to bring that bronzer and buff it about midway back through the head. So that way it is just slightly shadowing and bringing everything to the back of your head. I don't want to see lines. So smile. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of blush right on the apple. This stands the same. For all my makeovers, I don't like blush from the ear to the nose. I think it's too 1990s. <laughs> but I wanted to give her something with a little bit of shimmer to give that glow. Because right now she's feeling like her skin is dull and dry. So by putting this on, it just kind of brightened up her apple. So see when she's smiling? Look at that, so pretty. And that's Blush Your Heart. It's one of our newer colors. I always say kind of match your lipstick to the features, and if you don't have hair, you can kind of wear it whatever you want, but I would say just stay a little bit more towards the mid-tones, not too nude where you feel washed out and not super bright red. So what is your comfort zone? Do you want to try something that's more of a mauve orange, pink? 
I don't care. Or whatever I want. Whatever you want. I'm gonna do guava on her. That's my favorite. It always makes me feel good. If I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, I look tired. I put on guava, I'm like, I'm alive. So we actually here at JKC use a lip pencil first and we fill in the entire lip with it. And since her, she was saying her lips are dry, what you could do is just put lip dew on top of this lip pencil. So think of it like grandma's lip stain. Back in the old days, they would have one rouge product they would use on their lips and their cheeks. <laughs> That's kind of what this is. You just paint it all over your entire lip, massage your lip in, and I'm actually gonna put the lip dew on top of it. Oh my God, this is so pretty. I love this color on you. Still got that mirror? Look how pretty that uh -huh. is. I think that's a perfect amount of color for her lips. Oh yeah. Not too bright, not too dull, somewhere in the middle. So now the part that you guys have been waiting for. I think the biggest difference is going to be around the eye area. If you've lost all of your hair around your eye area, lashes and eyebrows, or it's thinning, that's when you start feeling like you're looking older and tired. So I'm gonna go over brows now. How to make your brows look like hair. So we have a pencil. I'm gonna use the medium brown color on her. And this pencil is going to match one of her wigs that I have here. Um, it's a brown one, she's not crazy about it, but it's the color her hair was before her hair fell out. And I think it'll look more natural if you go with a wig that's in your color hair family. She got a blonde one too, because she was feeling a little bit wild. <laughs> Um, so she could pull off a blonde wig as, as well. We're gonna see what they look like on in a minute. But just make sure whatever wig that you choose, that you choose a brow pencil that coordinates with that. If you're not gonna wear a wig, then you can just go with whatever your natural brow color was. But try not to go too, too dark. Try to be very light-handed. But this type pencil is one of the mechanical ones that scrolls up, and I call mine the Ultra Fine Brow Pencil, because as you can see when I draw on my hand, it creates tiny little hair-like strokes. Now, if you have a little bit of hair for these to stick to, the next product that you could use is my brow wigs. So my brow wigs, that's not the real name of them, they're <laughs> called 12 Hour Brow, are tiny little microfibers. But if you've lost all of your hair, you'll have to stick with just the pencil. But this little guy will make the pencil look even more natural by attaching fibers to the hair that she does have left and make everything look like a real brow. So I'm gonna quit talking and I'm gonna show y'all. I'm like super excited about I know this, this And if you want to watch, hold the mirror on this left side so you're not blocking the camera and turn your face this way just a hair. Uh. <laughs> just a hair, so you can go back just a little bit perfect. Is that good? So when you apply this, you want to make sure you're doing it in short little strokes. Turn towards me just a little bit more. There you go. So by drawing the little hair-like strokes, following the growth of the hair. So our brow in the inner corner grows in more of an upward motion. Mm -hmm. And then once we get over to the arch over here, then we're going to pull it downwards. Try to draw in what you're filling in more towards the top side of the brow. Don't fill in too low down here because it's oh, yeah. gonna drop everything. Then I'm gonna use this side just to soften everything just a bit. And you can see how it still looks yeah. like hair, but it's given her more of a defined look to her eyes. This wow. next product I'm gonna use is the Dirty Blonde. And you can see the tiny little fiber, see those? No, it's amazing. It's pretty cool. Relax your brows for me. And I'm gonna draw short little strokes going in an upward motion like this. And then once I get up to the arch, I'm gonna turn my little pencil around and go downwards, turn this way just a little bit, and then go about one more hair's length. And your brows may not be losing hair evenly on both sides. So you have to just kind of step back from the mirror and decide which one needs more length, more height, and try to, try to get them as close as possible. Like I feel like this one's a little bit thinner than the other. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna build it a little bit more thicker on the top side of this one over here to give it more of a lift. If you wanna build, don't build down low. Looking good. Now we're gonna get some of those brow wigs. Attach those little fibers to build that bridge in between. And the pencil was medium brown, the brow wigs. I'm actually doing the dirty blonde. I think my dusty brown would go a little bit too dark on her. So you're gonna take the same brush that you used to put on the concealer, wipe it all off, get all that oil off of it. You can use a tissue or a baby wipe. And this is what's gonna brighten and open up the eyes. So this is a cream-based shadow that we put underneath the outer two-thirds of the brow to create a lift. And now when you look in the camera, you can see how that just turned on a light bulb on her eye. And turn towards me. And there you go. Hold your chin high for me and look down. I'm gonna start right here at her baseline and I'm gonna apply the, apply the eye base natural. It's more of a weak tone, same formula as the brow lift 
But anytime that you're tired or you're going through something like this, maybe a lot of crying going on, those eyelids and the blood vessels start to pop around your eye and everything looks really red. But look at how by canceling out that on her eyelid, how much brighter everything looks. Look down, keep your head a little bit higher than the light and you can see the difference. So again, the same brush, different product. This is the third product we use with this brush, evening out everything on the eyelid. Looking good. Now for the eyes. Um, I think I would be careful and I'm hesitant to do something that's too dark and too smoky that's really loud. I would just keep it very soft and natural. Look up to just kind of enhance the shape of the eye. What's really gonna make the biggest difference is when I tight line her eyeliner. So I'm gonna start with just two shadows. I'm gonna do Desert Rose. I'll we'll make it easy and do Doe Eyes. This is one of my favorite little combos. So Doe Eyes is more like a shimmery shadow, kind of a taupe shade, chin high. You need zero artistic ability to put these two shadows on. It's very, very easy. You're just gonna tap this all the way across the lid and it's gonna give her a very light, smoky look. Try not to flick the brush like this so you don't end up with powder <laughs> shadow all over your nose and your cheekbone. Then I'm gonna follow with the blending shadow brush with Desert Rose and I'm gonna put this in that area in between the eyeball and the brow bone. So right through here. And this is gonna give her a little bit more of a setback and make her brow bone come forward and the crease go inward, making her look like she had a little eye lift. So look straight ahead. Looking good. And see how simple and clean that looks? Um, it's not hard to apply and it just looks like you're not really wearing a whole lot of makeup. So instead of black eyeliner, I'm gonna go for a softer look and we're gonna do the espresso brown, which is like a black brown type shade. This is what it looks like if you've never used this product. It's a cake liner. Have you used this one before? You're scared of it? I am. <laughs> this is I the don't one have product. very steady hands. <laughs> this is the one product that people get the most scared of. They're like, ugh, I can't do that, it's too hard. I highly suggest watching my video on YouTube on how to apply watercolor liner while you're doing it at home. The main thing that people do wrong is they use way too much water and they flood their eyes with it and they're like, it burns, it burns, I'm blind. You might go blind if you use too much water, so be careful. Um, and the second problem is they're not holding their chin up and looking down into a mirror. If you're trying to do it from a wall mirror, four feet away, you ain't gonna be able to get this stuff on. So hold your chin up and look down in one of those little vanity mirrors that you can just stand up as a pedestal and apply it that way. So you want it to be like a shoe polish. So something along the lines of that. Is yours dripping water on your hand when you mm -hmm. test it? It's about like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now hold the mirror up and I'm gonna have you look down into it while I'm applying. Oh. So let's hold the mirror right there. Okay. Hold your chin high and let's bring the mirror where you can see. Can you see? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, it's hold, your chin, hold your chin down just a little bit. There you go, now look in the mirror. Okay. So when you're applying it, you're not going underneath the lip, you're going underneath the lash line and you're pressing and you're wiggling right into the root. I say this for any woman that has no lashes or thinning lashes, or they've lost that frame they had around their eye when they were 18. This gives that frame back yeah. into me. So when you're applying this product, you wanna make sure that you are applying it right at the base of the lash line, both above and below the lashes. If you don't have any lashes, it just makes everything look nice and crisp and defined. Okay, so I've already done the watercolor liner, which is a tight liner effect on this side. So you guys can see the difference that it truly makes by giving your eye that frame. I feel like when you lose your brows and you lose your, the frame around your eye, it makes us look tired and it makes us look older. So by doing this, it just gives you like that oomph back to your eye. Um, pencils and liquids are a little bit harder to work with and to me look a lot more obvious if you don't have any hair at all. So I like how with this clay type product, you can wiggle it above and below the lash line to get that frame without looking drawn on or harsh. So turn towards me and look down and I'm gonna show you guys on this side how I apply this product. So you do not have to flip your own lid up like this. Just make sure you're looking down into a mirror and that you're pressing and wiggling right into the root of the lash. Use your hand as a palette to make sure you don't get too much water because like I was saying before, that's the one mistake women make is they use way too much water and they flood their eye. So just press and wiggle right at the root where the lash grows out. Don't put it underneath the lip of your eye. Look down this way. And I'm gonna go all the way to that inner corner. Don't stop halfway like the phone rang and you forgot what you were doing. Go all the way across corner to corner. And now I'll take a look straight ahead. But what a huge difference that makes. Take a look at your eyeliner. Oh yeah, like they look alive. Night, night and day, I like it. It makes her eye color stand out. She's got beautiful blue green eyes, chin high, look down. So I like the way it makes the eyes pop. And now I'm gonna use a color called Crimson Star. 
over here in the outer corner of her eye, just if she wants a little bit of va va voom. But I'm gonna use my finger to help kind of marry them together so it's not too, too dark, because again, I would stay away from really dark eye makeup, especially if you're not going to wear a wig so it doesn't look like it's too harsh on you. But just a little bit of that shadow in the inner corner gave her a tiny bit more of a pop. Turn this way, look down. When people say to me, oh, but I've lost all my bottom lashes, what do I do? Girl, that's a good thing. <laughs> we don't like to see a frame on the bottom side of your eye, so it's okay if you've lost your bottom lashes, don't stretch yourself out. Don't draw a line down there to create a lash line. I don't like the way that looks. Um, and please, for the love of God, don't draw on liquid liner underneath your eyes or put on mascara. Anytime that you do that, you add weight and it's gonna end up looking like you just have rings around your eye. So you can see how her eyes look nice and lifted and open. If you really, really feel like you need somewhat of a frame because you're really feeling naked, what you can do is tissue off all of the Crimson Star from the smoky color I put in the corner and use doe eyes on the underside. So look up, you can just kind of shadow this right where the hair did come out. Oh, we got a little bit of hair right around it. Just keep it really, really soft and natural. So you can see how she has a light frame. I prefer her without anything at all, but this can be like the weaning off step. So now we finished with her eyes. We put on the eyeliner, put on the eyebrows, the two biggest things that you can do to add that frame to your eye and still look natural. As you can tell, it doesn't look like she's got lines drawn across her eyes. She's got that nice rich brow, and then she's got a nice rich uh, baseline to her lashes. Next, I'm going to show you how to apply false lashes. So I find that Andrea Lash number 21 is the most natural looking lash. I don't want to see big fluffy snuffleupagus type lashes if you're not going to be wearing a wig, even if you're wearing a wig that's too much for me. Um, I like to use the Duo waterproof glue and I have some glue on the back of my hand right now and I like to use either a pair of tweezers or this little gizmo to run the glue on the back of the lash. I do have a video just for eyelashes if you want to watch that too. But if you have a little bit of hair left, at least three hairs, these won't fall down. But for someone who has alopecia or they've lost all of their eyelashes, I'm gonna be really honest with you, to put a false set, or not set, but a band, they just seem to kinda of wanna droop down. I'm just being honest with you, it's gonna be hard to get them on. There's nothing really to hold them up. But she's got enough hair, way, than, way more than enough hair to get these suckers to stay on. So look straight down. And when you apply these, you wanna go right up against your lash line. And this is made of like a latex glue, so it's not going to cause more hair to break off. It's not uh, a hard grabbing type glue. It takes a second to dry, but just take a look so far and look how that made your lashes look nice and full. They are nice and full. Holy moly. <laughs> so the lash glue looks white, but it does dry clear. Okay. So that will go away in a second. And then we hide the band with a little bit of eyeliner so nobody can tell that they're fake. But I like how these just gave you a really, really soft appearance and I think we'll be able to see it in the before and after picture. I also trimmed these eyelashes. I cut off the outer four notches if you need to trim the lashes because they're too long. It's like a pair of jeans. They all come really long. You trim them to fit. Um, that way they don't pinch you in the eye. But always make sure you trim from the outside. Chin high, look down, and just lay them right on top of the lash line. Try not to squeeze blink too hard when they're drying. It takes about one minute to dry. And then after that, they are on there all day. Now I'm gonna take a little bit more water. Holy crap. Aren't they so pretty? And you can reuse these things. I up to like, like a five different times. person. I know, a whole new girl. But doesn't it make your lashes look so much fuller? Yes. And they don't look ultra fake either, which I like. No. So I'm gonna use a little bit more of that espresso brown eyeliner that I was using. Please wait until your eyelashes are completely dry before adding water to the glue. And look down and just go right over the root of the lash and press and wiggle into the root. This will hide the little, um, the band with the little nuggets. I'm gonna call them little nuggets, little notches where each hair is glued to the band. So that way you don't see when you're blinking your eyes, nobody can tell. And then I would take just a hair of mascara once you cover up that band, just to kind of tuck your lashes that you have left in between in these between little them. guys okay. too. So that way it doesn't look like you have two layers of lash. I'm gonna use a waterproof mascara on you called Bulletproof, Maybe just a tad bit. Hold your chin high and then look down and I'm gonna tuck those lashes in between. So if somebody sees you from the side, they don't see two layers of lash. Some people say it's a really big no-no to put mascara over lashes, but I think it's all right. And voila. Yay. 
Okay, so voila, here it is. She's got her little fancy wig on now. And I think that this one is a great color for her. It looks like it belongs. And do you see how her eyebrows, her eyeliner, and her hair all match and they flow together? You don't see big dark black brows or too light of blonde brows. Once she got everything on, it really came together well. And I don't think anybody would know that that's not her hair. I think that one's pretty believable. I like it. They're making these suckers so good now that you can't really tell that they're fake. And this one, she says, not even real hair. And it still looks like real hair, doesn't it? <laughs> so thank you guys for watching and I hope some of the tips and the tricks that you learned here can help you tweak your makeup to look more polished and awake and really feel like the best version of you. So thank you and good luck to all of you guys out there.